Welcome back. The Clifford W. Beers Award is Mental Health America's highest honor. It is presented annually to a single individual with the lived experience of mental illness who best reflects the example set by MHA founder Clifford W. Beers in their efforts to improve conditions for and attitudes toward people living with mental health conditions. When we look at candidates for this award, we consider four things, impact, leadership, visibility, and bravery. Has the individual made or are they making major contributions to improve the lives of people who have mental illnesses, substance use, or co-occurring disorders? Has the individual demonstrated the ability to inspire and effectively educate the public about mental health, mental illnesses, substance use, or co-occurring disorders? Is the individual a visible and recognized leader at the national level in their specialized field or with a specialized population? And finally, does the individual illustrate their commitment to consumer advocacy despite potential risk to career, finances, and public acceptance? This year, our 2020 Clifford W. Beers Award winner checks all those boxes and more, and we're pleased to have him here with us today. Maurice Bernard is a mental health advocate, television and film actor, and New York Times bestselling author. He started his acting career on the soap opera, All My Children, from 1987 to 1990. And he then went on to a career in General Hospital, where he's been for more than 25 years. Maurice was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and when he was 22 years old and hospitalized twice. He has won two daytime Emmys for his work on General Hospital and has worked with multiple mental health organizations, including MHA, and collaborated with the writers of General Hospital to incorporate his diagnosis into his character, Sonny Corinthos' storyline, as well as the character's son, Morgan, thereby elevating the conversation and showing viewers the reality of the illness. Now 57, Maurice has spent decades advocating for mental health awareness. He's been very public about his diagnosis and struggles and continues to use his public platform to educate his fans about mental illness and bipolar. This year, he published his memoir, Nothing General About It, How Love and Lithium Saved Me, On and Off General Hospital. And he currently runs a YouTube series called State of Mind every Sunday to discuss mental health and his personal journey. Please join me in welcoming Maurice Menard. Maurice, it's good to see you again. Wow, that was, uh, I'm a little emotional. Uh, good to see you, good to see you. <laughs> Listen, this is an honor. Um, and I'll tell you, I've gotten, I've gotten awards before in the past, and I was just talking to somebody right now. And this one is so timely because remember last time we talked, I told you I had anxiety? Yeah, in the spring, we did that Instagram live together, yeah. It didn't leave for three to four months. And it was one of the worst things I've been through in my life. So for me to get this, this award now, I really feel like I went through a 12-round fight <laughs> with Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> Because usually anxiety comes and goes, comes and goes. This one did not go away. So to get this prestigious award it means so much to me at this point. Can you tell me a little more about this? I mean, like you say, you know, comes and goes, comes and goes. And I know a lot of people, we've talked about this earlier today, have been really struggling with anxiety these past few months. But what was it like for you personally? I mean, how, how did it affect you during that time? Well... It happened, I know exactly when it happened. Uh, as soon as coronavirus hit, I had some a problem with my mom and dad. And then my wife came and told me that GH shut down for four weeks and that we're not going on promotion for the book. And it just, I felt this rush of an adrenaline and I'm like, oh, oh. But the problem was 24 seven. It wouldn't go. It wouldn't leave. And uh, until finally, uh, I talked to a psychiatrist and started uh, taking Lexapro. And that kind of 
now I'm back. I'm glad you're back. I know back in uh, June, we were supposed to do this in person in Washington. We were gonna gonna have you there, yeah. And I don't know back in June if I could have, you know what I mean? Well, we couldn't have anyway because of the pandemic. Yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, I remember when I talked to you, I liked you a lot. And uh, but I was still trying to hide how how much I how much anxiety I had. I was trying to, and I'm really good at faking. I'm a good actor. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was trying to hide how much anxiety I was feeling at the time too. And, uh, so maybe I was good at faking it also. But I mean, we're, I mean, weren't we all? I mean, don't we all fake it sometimes? Well, you know, look, in this, you know. It, this pandemic, it's hard enough when you're not mentally ill, but when you're mentally ill, you got to double, triple that. Because it's just, it's, it's way difficult right now. But you know what, the, the bottom line, um, like my wife, my wife said something to me, I just keep saying it. I, I think I'm, I'm like a broken record, but it's such a beautiful thing she said to me. She says, honey, every time, do you understand? Every time you say you can't go on, a hundred percent you have gone on. And she's right. Sounds like a very wise woman. Oh yeah. Read my book, nothing general about it. Yeah, I, I have read <laughs> it and I would myself. highly recommend it to others. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I know. I, I think you're back on the set now, aren't you? Yeah, I'm in my, my producer, Frank Valentini's office. And uh, he's probably going to be upset at me because I'm in here too long, but that's all right. <laughs> well, not not long enough for us. I know we won't keep you, you know, longer than we than than, than we have to. But we're going to. Oh, take you're all right. You're all right. We possibly can. You're all right. Yeah. I play Sonny. Yeah, I know exactly. I say he shouldn't mess with you, right? <laughs> just just stay in character. <laughs> yeah. Is it made a difference getting back on the set? Just back to work, you know, doing the job that you love. Yeah, you know, a lot of the, a lot of what was going on with me too. My, my wife would say, "When you go back to work, you're gonna be all right." I said, "I don't know if I can go back to work." She goes, "Honey, when you go back to work, because you need, you you have never in twenty in thirty years you've had the same routine. This is your first time you don't, so that's why it's much more difficult for you." And I didn't want to hear. It. I was like, "No, I'm done. I don't. I can't even think." And it, but she's absolutely right. So once I got back in here, it it really did help me. It helped my confidence. It gave me juice, and uh, I I feel I feel strong again. I feel back. I'm back again. And I'm doing a very important storyline about Alzheimer's, and uh, it's very sad and emotional, but it's beautiful. It's beautiful. So, giving you a little more purpose in that regard. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm doing a the the character who's dying it plays my father. I've said it before and I'll say it again. This storyline not only is great, but he looks like my father. So when he's when I'm talking to him, I look at his lips and they're like it's my dad. So for me, it's not acting. I'm living it. I'm truly truly living it. And there's been some scenes this week that I call it kind of magic when you're in a scene and you're taken to somewhere else. And that's what's been going on. It's amazing. You know, you've been doing this this kind of thing for what 27 years now in in terms of getting, you know, your storyline, if you will, your, your personal one, kind of built into the, the character storyline in other ways too. And, you know, do you feel you've had a lot of opportunities like this just to be taken to another place in some of these uh, storylines and in, in, in the work that you're doing? Oh yeah, there's a lot, you know, life imitates art, imitates life. And a lot of things that I've done, uh, I, I'm just doing it here. You know, I, I told you when uh, when I was going to go to uh, speak in front of Congress, and I couldn't go because I had a, a, a anxiety attack. Well, that 
I had a, I was doing a, a storyline where the character has a nervous breakdown and all the stuff. Well, I didn't go to uh, speak in front of Congress. And the next day on the show, Sonny, my character, speaking to a psychiatrist. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, so here I am in the scene. I'm messed <laughs> up. And, and I'm asking her questions that, that kind of worked, you know. <laughs> well, well, I mean, but, I, I, uh, of course, you, you've, you've opened the, you opened the door for me to ask, ask this question. And that is, you know, was Sonny really speaking to a psychiatrist or was it just somebody who was playing a psychiatrist on TV? <laughs> <laughs> on TV, yes, yes. Uh, but it, there's a lot, you know, my, my son, Morgan, plays, uh, he had bipolar. So I guided him through the scenes. Mm -hmm. So there was a scene that was very important and it was a great scene. And he wasn't, cl it wasn't clicking for me. So I took him aside. I said, this is, a, this is like, like Eminem when you're saying it fast. You don't even know what's coming out. You're there. And then he came in and he did it and he was fabulous. You know, it, it's, uh, you know, interesting. Uh, th this, one of the things that you know, I mean, this award is, a, is to a peer. And our organization was created by a peer, by somebody with lived experience. And certainly throughout the chat today, you know, people have talked about the importance of peer support. And even actor to actor, in that case, you were providing peer support. You know, this is what it is like, you know, to live with this particular mental health condition. It may not always be pretty but it's always real and it's always personal and it, uh, and, and it's still me, you know, it's still, I, I, I'm, it's not defining me. I, I'm going to define myself. Uh, and, and that, that's, uh, that's important, isn't it? I mean, I, I think that letting people tell these stories and, and hearing from people like you, you know, it's really important for somebody else in this case, an actor to understand what it's like. Yeah. You know, I do this thing on, uh, Sundays, I've gone from Instagram story. Now I'm on YouTube. It's called State of Mind. It's kind of picked up an audience. And I'll never forget. And I speak about my life, my mental health. And a lot of times I speak about what I just go through. Like I just did with you, Paul, that what I've been through during the pandemic. That's what I do. And I talk to the audience. And, and there was a, a while there that I didn't understand, like, what are they really getting? And then somebody just wrote something very simple to me. And she said, look, you helped me get through my son's bipolar. And just the fact that you're talking about it, I don't feel alone. And then I said, wow, so simple, but it means that much that somebody else is talking. And so I continue to do this on YouTube now state of mind and it's very important to me i'm getting choked yeah, I mean, up a little bit now paul go ahead oh um, you know there, there's something else they're they're getting from you and that's truth you know yeah. they're getting honesty you know they're getting some, like you say they're getting something that's real you know like you say sometimes we think actors aren't real but you know a acting is in many respects real you know, you're channeling real emotions. You're, you're channeling real circumstances, real things. I mean, you've just done that so well in this space. It's made a difference. Yeah, just like you know, Robert De Niro said, uh, act to to many actors, acting is an illusion, but not for me. <laughs> and that's kind of the kind of stuff that I wanted to do, where it was just, you know, I I was taught the method from the actor studio and that's just using your real life in all the scenes and to me you know it's not that great for my health <laughs> <laughs> but it is good for the work because <laughs> my mom said once my mom said what you know because i was going through some stuff and she's like hijo why can't you go halfway I said, I can't act half, mom. I gotta be, that's gotta be the whole thing. You know, it's like, but she was just uh, worried about my health. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, you know, mothers mothers are like that. Uh, they yeah. they just worry about their kids' health. The rest of it can be set aside. Right. Right. Yeah. Hey, would you tell me talk a little bit about Paula too? I mean, you you and she have been uh, together a long time, and and you know it's tough. She's got the caregiver role, and uh, and and it's meant a lot to you the kind of support that she's given to you. Would you just tell people a little bit about that and? Yeah. How much that helps you to have her around? Well, we've been together, married 30 years, been together 35 years. And she has a way, she has a way of talking that just calms me. So she'll just say something and then I'll, all of a sudden I'm calm. And she knows when to be strong. She knows when not to be strong. During this last period, it was, it was, uh, oh. it was very difficult because it's the first time that uh, I had to. I didn't want my kids to ever see me in that state. But because of coronavirus, I had no choice. I had to come out to eat. I had to come out to go to, to, to eat dinner. So, and I was, you know, I was in such bad shape. And, but, you know, my family, they're just amazing. And they're, they're just great. And my wife, it's the first time ever in how many years? Uh, that I felt that I was starting to be a burden for her. Cause she, I couldn't sleep. It was, you know, so she wouldn't go to sleep till I went to sleep. And sometimes I didn't go to sleep till five in the morning. So she had to stay up all night to take care of me. And that's kind of what she's done for 35 years. Just always been there for me. You know, I, I, my wife is sitting here, you know, two feet away from me. I'm actually reaching out and <laughs> touching her hand right now and can't imagine, you know, getting through a day, you know, without her and without her support. And so what you're saying, I think, just rings true and so deeply for so many of us. And, and I want men in particular to hear that, you know, that it's, that it's okay to rely on other people. It's okay not to feel strong all the time. It's okay to ask for and receive help and to recognize there are people like Paula and Pam who are just always there to give it to us unquestioningly. Yeah. Yeah, you know, men, men gotta know that, because uh, I was brought up so macho and I used to fight all the time and and I and the and the thing is about me is I, I'm incredibly sensitive and so my feeling is with men let go of all that macho stuff man and my problem is ego my main a lot of my problem comes from ego I feel this is kind of a this might sound some weird stuff right now but I feel when I go through this stuff, it's whoever you believe, God, you know, whatever you believe is telling me, my, you, you gotta keep knocking down that ego. Because when I'm going through this stuff, there is no ego. It's like, I'm a scared little boy. So the more I go through it, the more I get to work on my ego. Um, the macho side of it, I've, I've done well with, but I know not a lot of men need to know that crying, it, it, crime brings you strength. It's not a weakness. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right about that. I, I, I want to note for people that, um, we've got a few minutes to go about 10 minutes and we are able to take a few questions from the the chat and I want to give others a chance to get in. I, I do have one that I just uh, had come just a, a little while ago and I just wanted to ask you about this, which is 
you know, the reactions of people. So what about the reactions over the years of other um, actors uh, to, um, to you, to, to what you've disclosed and to, to how you've gone about uh, this very public advocacy uh, around mental health for, for literally decades now? Do you say positive, negative, uh, ignore it? What, you know, how, how, how has it been received? Great question, Paul. You're, you're a good interviewer. Um, uh, you know, actors, I, I love actors, and I'm friends with many actors. But as far as my mental illness, there's not a lot, there, you know, I'm going to do a state of mind on this. It's, it's not something that people really, like, I think if I had, obviously, a tumor or cancer, there would be a d different feeling. Uh, but as far as the audience, unbelievable how many people live with mental illness, suffer. It is on, and I get it in my, you know, on my phone and social media, people send me stuff. It's unreal how many people uh, go through. And, I, and I'll tell you the first, the, the re, how I came to talk about it. Because, you know, the, the story is that this somebody said to me, don't talk about being bipolar because you'll never get hired as an actor. So I didn't talk about it for a long time. And then uh, uh, I did this little interview for nothing, this little magazine. And I said that I was mentally ill, whatever. And this boy sends me a letter. And the letter said, I want to thank you for that little, that article that, that I read about you and being bipolar, it helped me get through my brother because he committed suicide, he, he took a gun and he killed himself. And by reading your story, it helped me get through it. After that, I said, I don't care. I'm talking about this. And then that's how it all started. Yeah, I, I've had so many similar experiences that it was so uncomfortable telling my own story, um, you know, at the beginning. And again, my, my story, you know, was a story first of a caregiver, you know, with a son with a serious mental illness. And then as I told it, I realized it just helped other people share theirs. And it, I just have always been, well, not anymore, I'm no longer astonished, but I used to be about how many people have so many stories that are similar to ours. Yeah. And, and how they felt alone. And by bringing these out in the open, they, they feel less lonely and they feel more supported and more included. Yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, what, what you do, what I, what I do is, is uh, if anything else, if it helps people, that's, that's it for me, man. Well, it's definitely helping people and has, has been helping people. And, you know, with, what we've been going through back to the pandemic and um, race inequalities and equities that, that we've been dealing with, there's just a lot, a lot people have been dealing with. Um, what do you say to those uh, who you know are watching right now who may be struggling a bit? We, we've certainly seen some comments in the in the chat that we've got people like that. So got an opportunity to speak directly to them for a minute. What do you tell them? Well, uh, try not to watch too much, uh, you know, CNN <laughs> or, or, or news or stuff like that, because that, that can get you. You got to keep doing what you were doing before you started feeling this way. I know it's hard. You get up, get out of bed. Don't stay in bed. Go work out. Now I'm meditating and I'm still meditating. Uh, I play with my goats. I go do things. Uh, even though it, it was so difficult to do, I still did it because if you don't do that and you just stay in bed, it's, it's, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. Also, seriously, sometimes this, just like me right now with the anxiety, no amount of talking was going to help. So I went to a psychiatrist and had to um, take something 
for my anxiety. And even though I didn't want to, it took three to four months, go get help, go get medical help if, if it's needed. But try to do it yourself, uh, always, I think, because it's, it's, you know. But if you can't, please get professional help. So well, I, I, I meant to ask you uh, earlier about your goats and uh, and and you brought those up. So so there is the professional help part that is just so important. And um, and I'm glad that you that you brought that up and, and emphasize it. There is also the self-help part. And I know the goats are part of that. Would you just give people a little <laughs> bit uh, about the goats? Yeah, well, buddy, the goat. Buddy the goat, he's he's you know, in the beginning he was very affectionate. He'd jump on me, we hug, he we talk, we do all kinds of stuff, you know. But then uh, you know, as the years go by and he's been in a lot of my Instagrams, he's getting kind of a big head. So he doesn't want me to take pictures of him anymore, he doesn't want me to do this. But at least when I go in there, he's he He's right by my side, doesn't come up anymore because I think he's he's too old for that now. But he's right there, and uh, and you know with animals because I have uh, uh, alpacas, goats, horses. There's a certain peace and calm that I get up in my house in in Temecula. That's that's amazing. You know you 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 can't buy that. You just feel it. And I just look at these animals and they're so, they're not thinking. They're just in the moment. It's beautiful. That is a beautiful way to be. I just, uh, I, I've got another question here I wanna, wanna bring in from the, the, the chat audience. And uh, one person has, has noted the amount of time that you've taken kind of developing your career, in your career and, and really all of this. And, you know, they want to know what you wish you would have known, you know, 30 years ago as you were kind of starting out uh, on this journey uh, that you didn't know then that you know now, I think is a way of saying, you know, they, they're saying, what do you wish somebody had told you, which I think is, what do you say to somebody who's not 57, but 17 or 27, who was starting along this pathway? I think I would have said, don't, don't hang on so tight. Just let go. You got to let go. You got to, you know, my dad has a saying in Spanish. It's a, uh, lo que va a pasar, va a pasar. What's going to happen is going to happen. And, and I, and I wish somebody would have given me Eckhart uh, Tolle's book, The Power of Now. Because that's what it's all about. Forget the past, forget the future. It's all about this moment right here. Sounds like you've done cognitive behavioral therapy like I have. It keeps, my, my therapist kept saying, focus on now. Stop worrying so much about a future you can't control. I know, but sometimes it's hard. <laughs> it is hard, isn't it? When you, when you look yeah. forward, I mean, I like to look forward with hope. But when you look <laughs> forward, sometimes it's hard to see that hopeful path. Yeah. Well, I, I think we're going to get there, and uh, and I think we're we're just about um, out of time. Where I've promised to let you go, and uh, and you know, promised to uh, move on so that we can get the next part of this. But again, I want to just take a, a minute or so, Maurice, again to just thank you one more time. I we didn't have a chance in thirty minutes to really just go into all of what you've done for Mental Health America, really for decades, for, for, for NAMI, for, for other mental health advocacy organizations. You have been there using your celebrity for all of us, and uh, you've been willing to be out there and, and take risks on our behalf. And, uh, and I'm so glad that we were able to, to, to do this this year and uh, you know, hope that you know, we'll have an opportunity one of these times to do one of these conversations in person, if we can yeah. get ourselves to the same place at the same time again. Yeah, I'd love it. I'd love it. And, uh, you know, I, it was great today because I feel safe with you. Um, 
he's just a good guy. And uh, I, I love when I, I get interviewed by a good guy because it, huh. I can, <laughs> I can, I can do, you know, I can let go, let go. And I'm not hanging out so tight. <laughs> I appreciate that. No, and I'll tell you, I, I like talking to good guys too. So we're in the same boat. We're in the same boat on this one. I, you know, I've done a lot of doing a lot of interviews for this one, and each time we're getting ready, and I'm like, uh, you know, I, I haven't met some of these people. Fortunately, we'd have a chance. We'd had a yeah. chance to talk one time before. So, you know, so again, just the congratulations, first of all, on being the 2020 Clifford Beers Award winner for Mental Health America. And, uh, and again, thank you one more time for your, your time today and for oh, all of your you. advocacy. Thank you very much, Paul. I'll see, you. I'll see you next time. Okay, sounds great. All right. We'll be right Bye. back.